Peace all, Marika Ma'ai here of <laughs> Marika Bar Mystics and Upright Root and Aspire Higher. Welcome to this segment of Random Forest Day. Uh, today, today is that Jupiter wave, uh, the purple octave, uh, the day where we saw is great to be able to um, expand your mind, look to your highest heights rather than your lowest lows, you know. Um, I also do write-ups on Random Forest Day now. And I, I post that usually on Upright Root and Aspire Higher Instagram page and the Facebook page and the Twitter page. So check it out. Sometimes it correlates to, to the video messages, other times it doesn't. Uh, today we're here to speak about um, astrology. Today it does correlate actually. Check out the write up, he'll give you more of the scoop, right? Astrology is real. Astrology is not pseudo, okay? And it, it really does kind of um, help you understand yourself best. And as I said in the write-up, the best in, in life, and I've been talking about it, and it's kind of been the theme for the weekly um, power messages as well, that we really have to ascertain who we are and strive to be our highest self. It's very easy for us not to, because we, we live in this um, dense world. The earth realm is very much about our physicality. And we've been geared to not understand our spiritual side, which comes first. I was trying to say foremost. It comes first. It is foremost, right? And so um, the better, the, the, no, not the better. If we can atti attune ourselves to our spiritual nature, understand it and make it work for us, then we can really thrive in this earth plane. And that is the master key, like literally. It's uh, very easy for us, you know, just live haphazardly, follow the, the set rules and mores that has been already implemented for us, but it's not really the best the best way. So the more that we can, again, get to know ourselves, our holistic self, like the things that we don't see is the, the more that we can understand why we see the things we do see. You know, and so getting to know ourselves is imperative, and getting to know not just our physical self, but more importantly, which comes first, is our internal self, our spiritual self, which means like how we think, why we think the way we think, you know, why is our makeup the way it is. I speak about this often because that's like. It's, all, it's, it's becoming my pastime. I've been like 10 years deep in this. I really started kind of going within myself a little bit over 10 years. But in the 10th year, 2010, that's when I really went hard. Because you come to realize that when you're coming into your spiritual awakening, you realize that like there's going to be something in your world that just like something that is very what you thought is concrete in your world kind of just shatters. And then you have to kind of like ask yourself these questions like is this life is this really it or you know just coming to realize that oh shit i i thought this was the way and now now i realize that actually it's not the way and usually that's when you're coming into your inner standing that spirit is first and matter is after right and um that's why i want to talk about astrology because astrology really helps you understand the makeup of you you know the um our birth chart or our natal chart which is commonly known is um basically the the map of the sky when you are born and if you, as i say as we all know uh, gnosis knows is that as above so below and as within so without like meaning that the heavens is what governs the earth plane and what is what you feel inside then in turn responds to you back on the outside right so understanding your your astrology chart your um, astral chart is really important and it's not just about the zodiac it's all it's about the constellations because um my take on astrology is is more whole rounded i'd say because it's not just about the astro astrological signs or the zodiac signs but it's also about the astronomical signs i.e the meteor showers the constellation that don't run through the ecliptic but still are an influence on us and we can see the stars again whatever you you see within or and or what you see without is a correlation of what's going on within and clues and coups for you as you move on to this um in this world you know if you're about following your if you're about thriving and not just surviving you definitely want to be following your purpose and to get to your purpose is understanding the first self giving yourself enough time loving yourself enough to not just follow but to lead you know that's that's the key start to say and again astrology is not pseudo i might just need I might, that might be the name for this one astrology is not pseudo okay it's for real it's real 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 and um 
I, I, you know, I, I've been speaking and I used to speak to, ah, let's cut that out, it wasn't about speaking. Um, I've been trying to show people that might not be so privy to uh, the spiritual side of things that, I can not say, it. help them understand it. And it's like, them understand it so that so we, again we can thrive and not just survive and um, right now we're in Capricorn season and Capricorn is all about that material realm it's all about the physical realm your ambitions you know what you want for your long run your length, longevity your lineage even it's, it's seen as a father figure and it's ruled by Saturn is that that cruel to be kind teacher right and Saturn is about you understanding where your where your limitations are you know why you get stuck in this situation or not situation per se but why do you get stuck on these things these isms these schisms uh, so you can grow past that and to grow past that is first going within to understand the internal or the yin side of things so you can then move which it, the movement is all about the masculine energy it's all about the yang you know the physical realm as well the material realm and um, always to understand that spirituality is first and like it's not something to be spooked at it's actually something to be revered because again it's the forerunner it's the foremost it comes first you know I've got some notes here uh, I was gonna go more into the astrological side but then I started talking on on the on the philosophical side so okay but let me say that um, the zodiac system, the, the procession of the equinoxes, you know, helping you decipher the seasons and our ancestors, or say, uh, have been like de dealing with the planet's nature for eons. Like, you know, I've said before that I'm, I'm, I'm okay with calling myself a witch, um, not by the, its normal connotation or its um, common connotations nowadays, or denotation even. Um, but to begin with, um, a witch is or was back in the day when they you know when they had the Salem witch hunts and before that even a witch was someone that understood nature and was able to to thrive in the natural state and it was able to um, to bring about their desired wants and needs by utilizing nature, knowing like the moon cycles, knowing the sign, uh, the soul sign changes, the seasons that it comes into, and uh, you know, just even farmers used to use it, depending on whether it was waning or, or in the gibbous phase and um, crescent moon or, or full moon or close to full moon, all of these things. Uh, you know, even the water tides are governed by the moon as well. When you see it. Um, uh, when the tide is in or out, it flows and everything. That's also governing the, the waters in our bodies as well. So nature really does denote a lot for us. But individually, we also have our own little mechanisms that, that can be tweaked here and there, only specific to us. So that's why it's important. Even though we can get the, you can understand the the collective. And that can give you a really good footing, which is why I do the collective readings and the collective talks for people. When you want to know something specific about yourself, you really have to go within or get to know, or like myself, like a way show that I am I'm one of the ones that come here to to help people understand their intricacies. Because I've taken enough time to understand my own and in doing so, it helps you understand everything else around you and even other aspects that may not be of your own, you know? So get at me if you want a consultation, reading, all these things, um, I'm here for that. Um, otherwise, being a witch is understanding, and you know, men are witches too, we all have yin and yang in us, you may prefer to call yourself a warlock if that's the case, that's cool, a druid maybe, however, um, and then, you know, there's a good and a bad in everyone. Okay, but it depends on how you really move in life, you know, that will denote. And don't let people's, like, face first fool you. Uh, because sometimes people are, you know, are masked in, 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 um, in regalia or clothing or whatever. And they make you think, oh, yeah, they seem like an upright citizen. And um, it's not always the case, you know. I've come across a few that, uh, that you know, you, you think, like, they, they, these, these people must be, you know, upstanding citizens, like we say. But really, behind closed door, they're practicing the dark stuff, yeah? 
and like I said we all have dark and light but it's how you use it you know um, for me my my what I do with my dark is try and transmute it right rather than and then use it to manipulate okay or my knowing of the dark side because I know the both the light and the dark and um, there are times where I feel very close to kind of just you know open up that dark box but I realize that it's not worth it I've lived enough lives to realize that it's not worth it even though it gets me it, 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 the things that I have to deal with personally with my own chart is like it's, it can get very heavy and sometimes I just want to float that black box at people but really there's always a lesson behind it for me to keep myself zen and to keep myself peaceful is much better than to react to situations right even though because most of the time that's what is that's what it's called for for you to react it gives the it gives that energy more fuel right so um let's look at let's, let's look at the signs okay and you know remember like I, well, probably I want, didn't want to go too much on the signs is because we are more than our sun signs, okay? We are our moon signs, like, depending on the aspects, that, that's depending on how the sun and the moon correlate to each other. Do they, um, do they complement each other or not? Or, you know, also our communication, which is our Mercury sign, and our deep-seated secrets, our eighth house, you know, the houses, the, where the planets are placed in the houses are also very, very important. And it's all unique to each individual. You know, that's more the reason why you should always have someone to, that knows about the things to um, give you a personalized cons consultation or um, have someone look at it deeply with you. And um, again, you have to know yourself, take time with yourself. That means getting to, uh, <laughs> I know this not, might be an easy one for most, but you have to find out take the time to because I've uh, there's a few people that want a birth chart but they're not like working towards like the simplest thing the first thing is to go find out what time they were born or to even ask the questions to their family members and stuff they you know they're so busy in the mundane world that that, that doesn't seem important but if they only knew that if you were to just take the time to find that out you can really like stop the mundane wheelbarrow thing that we do the hamster wheel you know, if you just take the time to find out who you are, that means taking the time to love yourself enough to ask the questions that you need to ask so you can get the answers that you need to really thrive again, not just survive. You know, it's, it's imperative. I sounded redundant. It's because I just did that real right out, that's why. <laughs> I don't know, like I said this before, I said this before, but I read a result earlier on today. Anyways, so let's look at um, Pisces. I start with Pisces because um, although Aries is seen to be the first um, you like the zero comes before the first um, Pisces is that alpha and the omega because it's about the subconscious okay Aries is almost is about the conscious self and Pisces is the subconscious right and at its highest height Pisces is like intuitive and um, at its lowest lows is a procrastinative or it's a procrastinator right and then Aries is um, so I'm gonna do yin and yang or, or the high and the low of each sign and remember it's not just about your Sun sign I think most importantly is your moon sign because that's how you like the moon is is that the mother figure your nurture your your nature your emotions your how you react to situations you know the air the, and the sun is, is equally important but because we already know so much about the sun we need to understand more about the moon which again it's like the that spirit first and matter after and the sun represents actually your father the lesson that your father has for you and um, it's about your actions you know how you are seen outside in the world or your, your how you move basically okay so back to the to the signs Aries at its highest height is self-motivated you know self 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 but in the high vibration like it's self-motivated self-reliant and it's lowest low is selfish okay or self-centered even I got here and then we have Taurus at its highest height is grounded okay and it's lowest low is stubborn okay Gemini at its highest height is very knowledgeable very wise but it's a low, it's low, it's very fickle, okay? And then cancer is very strong, okay? At its height, it's height. And it's low, it's low, it's very manipulative. And when I say strong, I mean strong in, in, in zeal, in ability to just do what it needs to do, okay? And Leo, at its highest height, it's firm, okay? And it's all about the soul recognition. And at its lowest low, it can be timid and, and um, again, I don't want to say egotistical, but in a way, because timid can be a, a 
person that is shy can also be egotistical. Egotistical can, is, is, is like, there's a high and a low to that as well. You can be egotistical where you're very boastful, or you can get egotistical where you're very, like, you're very, um, what do you call it, very meek, overly meek. There's a time to be meek. I remember a post I did about that as well. There's a time to be meek, but um, there's a, there's all, it's more so when you give your power away, you know, that kind of meekness is not okay, you know? Uh, Virgo at his highest height is, is um, very detailed and work focused, the work service orientated, and at its lowest low is very critical, okay? And a bit of a stick in the mud, I don't like to have fun and stuff. Okay, Libra at its highest height is compassionate and at its lowest low is imbalanced, right? And then Scorpio at its highest height is, is depth. It's, it's, um, and it's, uh, at its lowest low is dark and with the depth thing because everybody always says Scorpio is very deep like, what does that really mean just like it doesn't it doesn't just stop at the surface it goes down it's like most that lot of Scorpios are into the to the occults and so it can and uh, that's why the polar, polar opposite is that as much as it can be um, deep it's also there's a deepness where you can utilize it for its highest height or you can utilize it for its lowest low you know and when I say dark i mean like using the dark magic to to manipulate and and um because usually dark magic dark magic dark magic uh, is um referred to as manipulative kind of um work spell work or whatever kind of work you know magic work okay and ophicus at its highest height is holistic right understands the whole whole wholeness because ophicus is at the cent is at the center of the galaxy yeah and so it knows all around it goes deep within to understand it all okay and then at its lowest low it's fragmented so it just kind of may just look at one side or the other side and not look at the, the holistic side i see baby mom was doing a recording though they got a new toy okay and um, Sagittarius at its highest height is expansive, okay? It, it like kind of looks at the higher plane of existence, not just the, the mundane. Again, that spirit first and matter after, the, the yin and the yang type thing, right? And then Capricorn at its highest height is um, due diligent and at its lowest low, it's uh, materialistic, okay? And like, you know, being like, I don't want to say being materialistic is okay, but uh, like, Wanting nice things in life is not a thing at all. We, we were supposed to, okay? But it's not choosing that over or forsaking that over everything else, okay? Because that's when it's a problem because then, that, again, that's that lopsidedness where we are kind of like looking to yang only and not the yin or looking... <laughs> Hi? Okay. I'm um, looking at the... Um, the material realm and the tangible stuff but they're not understanding the spiritual side of life remember that comes first and we've been governed to, to not realize that because it just um, it makes people more docile because if you really truly knew our internal self like 110 percent real strong then half of the stuff that we do half of the things that we worry about the depression the mental illness that will be spoofed right and then we have aquarius um which has it at its highest height, highest height, it is detached, okay? No, sorry, at its highest height, and, and, and you know what, detachment is a good thing too, that's why I probably got it out there, because I got the first is freedom, but I got detached in a little, inside the box, little, um, and I'll explain that in a minute, and it's the lowest low is aloof, right? And why I said detachment is cool, because in this, like, again, we get very, like, um, clingy with things the physical things and you know most people say like when you die you can't take your money with you you can't take people with you you just you're gone like and you're not really gone you know you go into this different waves but why it's important not to not to attach to too many things even the people you love and stuff which is hard but um it's a thing because when you do pass it it'll be less of a stress because you're not you're not really clinging onto their physical self you understand their spirit their nature and you understand that the, the beauty of anything and everything is is, is this essence and the essence is, is unseen you know the reason why you may love somebody it shouldn't be because of what they look like it's because of how they make you feel the personality that they have the traits the things they do you know and I don't want to say things they do like maybe they might give you something or um, you know they might give you a good walk or whatever I was thinking about wine but what came out oh god Ugh. um yeah detaching not being too you know um 
clingy into things. It's really important, you know, even relationships, I think a lot of us kind of be like, oh, that's my man, that's my wife, you can't talk to her, you can't talk to him, and I'm like, come on, you have to let people be free. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, we have to really, like, I think relationships in general, I hope we are kind of, understand, even just understanding love and self first is helping understand that so many of the ways we've been governed to deal with, deal in relationships have now, you know, been eradicated, but you have to let everything flow. You can't be too attached to anything because it's, it can easily be ripped away from you. So more the reason for you to just appreciate the things in the moment and being present, being in the now helps you do that, you know. Um, what's that term? Mindfulness is, is key, you know. Enjoying the moment, uh, it's the thing, because sometimes you're just there and you're like there, but really if you be here, you're, you're, you're much better off. We all are. It's a practice. I, yes, and you know, again, there are, uh, common astrology sees um, the wheel with only 12 houses and I actually see it with 13 houses but I haven't like kind of pinned it down yet but I'm working on a system for it and um, yeah just to let you know it's not it's not just coming out of, I mean it is coming out of the dome um, but it's, it's, it's divinely guided okay whatever you choose to follow it's up to you but um, yes I, I stand strong with what, with what I do what I know and I'm always like I say the first one to say look I was wrong if need be you know but remembering we have the soul, we have the moon, and let me run that down for you. The soul again is about your actions and your father energy. Okay, the moon is, excuse me, your emotions and your mother energy. And Mercury is how you communicate, how you use your intelligence. And Venus is about your um, understanding what's abundant around you, the things that you love and how to bring in peace, okay? And Mars is about your actions, your, your energy, how you move, what you move towards, okay? And um, Jupiter is all about you expanding and, and bringing opportunities around. Okay, Saturn is about your limitations and your lessons to be learned so you can earn some blessings, right? Pluto is about your um, your much needed transformation, the things that, that you may find hard to, to tweak, or but once you do, you can really open up a whole new door for you. It's like most of the, um, the butterfly effect energy, right? Well, you have to be the ugly caterpillar type thing, slug and sloth. But then when you go into your cocoon, when you go within, you can come out a beautiful, bright, whole new you, you know? And Uranus is about that, that, that instant, oh, I was going to say instant gratification, but because it comes from your highest height, when you're tuned to your higher self, like you get spontaneous knowing, you know? It's the energy. And Neptune is that that Piscean energy who helps you flow with the energies, but also it's so important with Neptune to always anchor yourself in groundedness. So you can, oh shoot, I just remembered that, excuse me, about anchoring. Um, Neptune is about you, um, you, yeah, you going with the flow, but also concreting yourself. Okay, that's that Pisces and Virgo polarity energy. And Chiron, uh, which I think is really key for us at this time, is where you have your most um, needed healing. The, your, like um, we, go, we have Pluto, which is the, your transformation, what's needed you to transform. And usually those are things that, well, I say both Pluto and, and Chiron have like a similar energy. Um, but Chiron's energy is something that you need to heal, okay? Something that you need to mend, I'd rather say. Because um, I did a... Um, raw clarity reality check on that word healing and it's like it's a it's an ongoing word right it's like a doing word a verb right instead we should say mend i am mending or i'm mended this so it can be done and dusted otherwise if you continue because you know words sound power it has it carries weight right and if we we have to be very mindful of the words we use that's why i'm big on um, etymology i did study linguistics at uni so you know words is a thing but Chiron, Chiron is really important, I feel, and I think it works really well with the Ophicus energy. And like Ophicus, it has been kind of used, but not really used. Um, and it's, it's, um, it really will help us, again, move forward onto this Aquarius age as we're in the shadow phases. Uh, we're kind of like really in, 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 the, in the groove already. But um, yes, right now we are going for this stage where, um, yes, I think it's kind of settled down a little bit where the woman is being more empowered, but now we need to realize that the man shouldn't ever be shone, because then that's not balanced, okay? Libra, I, cusp on the Scorpio, is understanding that the man should also be uprighted, you know? So I speak about uprighted roots and aspiring higher. Yeah, so that's what I got for you. And let me give you the true 
the 13 sign sidereal astrology sign dates for your sun sign okay um pisces and remember the dates are like give or take a few days the energy lingers um, give or take a few days but it's, it's you know a man-made law we need that time to frame and to help us concrete certain things so here are the dates so pisces starts on march the 10th to april the 20th excuse me aries is april the 21st to may the 12th and we have taurus may the 13th to june the 19th and last week's weekly power up, i mentioned that we have some work to do with the constellations that we have um kind of conjuncting the moon recently and we have uh, we have until taurus season so taurus season from may the 13th to june the 19th okay and then we have Gemini, which is starts at June twentieth to July sixteenth. Starts give or take a few days, like I say, because I can hear you all chatting. Yeah. Um, Cancer, July the seventeenth, August the sixth, and Leo, which is a very interesting sign in the whole constellation zodiac system, you know, because Leo, we have the full moon in Leo to, um, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? What's today? No, on the ninth or the eighth, depending on where you are. And Leo seems to be the only sign that correlates with the Western astrology as well as the 13th sign astrology. And interesting enough, Leo is also like one of those signs that you can really dispute in regards to whether it should be in a, in a part of the zodiac or not. Just like Ophicus is, a, is disputed because in fact, Ophicus has a whole whole branch that's still part of the ecliptic but they don't want to acknowledge it but then we have um leo which has just one star touching the ecliptic and it, because it's a big star it's, it's a bright star you can't really shun it but even still like uh maybe because you could they, maybe could they couldn't see it or figures but they've been knowing about figures for a long time they just didn't want to give it to us because like sagittarius scorpio and it just it goes deep like I said, the Scorpio starts the deepness. The, the um, Ophicus is the deep. And then um, Sagittarius comes up and brings out the truth of the deep, you know? So, um, yeah. I remember we have these um, energies in different aspects of us. So, whether it's our communication. So, we might, if you're a Scorpio, um, Scorpio, if you're, if your Mercury is in Scorpio, or your eighth house you might be one that really speaks a lot about the truth or finds out the truth or speaks a lot not the truth i'm saying about the deep deepness of life or you know um the occult and it may be really into that or uh, if, if it's in the eighth house definitely you um you tend to acquire people to come in and tell you their truths and their their deep-seated secret the deep-seated secrets and stuff you know yeah so uh where are we we stopped at Leo so Virgo which is the longest run on the ecliptic you most people think they're Virgo if they um, most people don't realize they're Virgo most people think they're Libra when they're actually they're Virgo or um, think they're a Virgo when they're actually a Leo because Virgo actually takes up a lot of the constellation it's um, constellation I mean the ecliptic journey it's cool um so it starts on november the 14th excuse me did i say november no i said september i meant september the 15th until november the 3rd so the whole of october if you thought you was a libra in that month you had not sorry okay and i know libra is a very much love sign i know i think a lot of people don't really too tough like virgos and, and gemini energies but those are really 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 extremely powerful signs you know i mean they all are in their own right that's the thing so that's why you have to like not shun anything not compare anything just just be and just in just get to know truly okay so libra season starts from november the 4th to november the 22nd and then we have scorpio which starts on november the 23rd to december the 6th um Ophicus, december the 7th to december the 18th it's a very short little constellation and it's not that it's just short constellation but the eclipse it doesn't run for very long on it right and um sagittarius december the 19th to january the 19th a capricorn season as we're in right now january the 20th until february the 13th and then aquarius season is february the 14th to march the 9th all right so that's it y'all i'm gonna leave it before i can't just upload this on instagram and stuff because that's what we're doing there and on the youtube too so um i hope this uh, helped somehow some way i'm sure yay and um that if you need any more of my assistance more of my know-how then please do get in contact because um this is my life works i love it i love like helping people understand themselves because 
it, it, it's been such it's been the best thing for me in life like I, I can't express it any I don't know how else to express it it's really it's the key it's really really just helped you like be more settled within yourself and not stand for certain things and really understand why this and that has to happen or why it did happen and how you can best move out of it or through it because of it in spite of it you know so thank you very much for your listening ears I hope you enjoy the rest of your day rest of your week rest of your hey life <laughs> peace love and um, bliss